Hi, my name's Dr. Paul Campbell and I'm a lecturer in sociology here at the University of Leicester. Um, my specialism is on race. So I'm just gonna talk a little bit about the Black Lives Matter protest that we've seen in the US across Europe and at home here in the UK over the last week or so. <clears throat> so initially, the protests were in response to the horrific and brutal murder of African-American George Floyd by the US police on May 25th. The sheer brutality and unnecessary nature of the murder um, really illustrated the sheer disregard for African-American life in the US and also of black inequality within the United States. And it's that theme of inequality, of racial inequality, that seems to have resonated with a number of black, Asian and minority ethnic communities across Europe, in Australia and at home in the UK. So we know that um, in the UK, that if you're from a black community, then there's a higher chance that you'll be in a poorer household, that you will be in low skilled um, work, that you will be um, experience glass ceilings, that you will experience an award gap in education, that if you're a black woman, there's a higher likelihood of dying um, in, in labor than if you're a white woman, so we know, for example, that one in two and a half thousand black women die in labor in the UK compared to one in 15,000 white women in the UK. Um, and if you're a young uh, or if you're a black man, then you're more likely to have been harassed or have experienced violence at the hands of the police. So, for example, last year we saw that of all the stun gun usage on young people, that um, young people from black, Asian, minority, ethnic backgrounds accounted sorry, for 50% of the total people that stun guns were used on. This is despite um, people from those communities only accounting for 14% of the general population. So what we've seen is that, every in, uh, the, the, by every social measure um, or every social indicator, that black people experience inequality. However, despite this, um, race is routinely dismissed at all levels of social life, um, from politicians to the institutions to the general public. We're constantly told that Britain is a tolerant country. We're constantly told that Britain is a meritocratic space. We're constantly told that Britain is post-racial. So what this means is, is that not only are black people experiencing inequality, but they're also dismissed when they raise, um, when they offer these examples, they're often accused of playing a race card or often accused of uh, playing identity politics. So we see then that the black community is marginalized, is dismissed and is in effect silenced. And it really is those ingredients which lead to initially to protest and then to riots, because actually riots are the, uh, the last resort of the voiceless. So is this um, a turning point? Is this a watershed moment in the black experience at home and abroad? Well, really, it's too early to say. Um, what we do have to recognize that the initial response has been quite encouraging. We have seen a remarkable show of solidarity across communities and across people and organizations from all walks of life. So we've seen, for example, professional football clubs, um, uh, uh, professional football clubs, companies, people at the local level all subscribing to events such as a blackout Tuesday. Um, however, this show of solidarity is in response to this really grotesque 
and really kind of shocking moment. And what we have to be cautious of is that actually that this solidarity and recognition is only in response to this one remarkable moment and doesn't translate into meaningful and everyday change. So to achieve this, what we really need is to first at least acknowledge and recognize that race is a proxy for inequality in the UK. And what this means is that we have to recognize that if you're from a black community, society does not work for you in the same way that it works for others. The state doesn't work for you in the same way that it does for others. And it's only then, once we actually acknowledge that racial inequality exists, can we really begin to meaningfully tackle the kinds of inequalities and experiences which have led so many people across the world to protest. 